We're just about one month into the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season and the basin is keeping us on our toes with a couple of anomalous storms that we don't necessarily expect to see so early on. To start, uh, to kind of recap where we're at so far, I have named storms in quotes here to account for the January subtropical storm that was not technically named by the National Hurricane Center, but was designated after the fact. So that's going to count, bringing us up to four on the season in total. Nothing too wild in terms of our activity otherwise so far. A few tropical storms that we saw in June and our accumulated cyclone energy are basically combined metric to account for both the strength and the duration of storms is almost five times above the average uh, year to date at 9.8 units, but nothing, uh, nothing groundbreaking necessarily. You see the tracks uh, for the season so far as of uh, June 27th here today. Uh, you see Tropical Storm Arlene was our first storm to form right after the official start of the season near June 1st. A very weak and uh, short lived tropical storm that was a pretty big rainmaker for parts of South Florida. And these are the two that are really interesting. Brett and Cindy. This is the part of the basin where you typically expect to see plenty of tropical cyclone activity, but not necessarily in June. A couple of anomalously east forming storms here in the tropical part of the basin. Brett brought some squally weather to parts of the Lesser Antilles before uh, degenerating in the Central Caribbean Sea. And we're going to keep an eye out on Cindy in the next couple days as well. All of this fueled by water temperatures that are pretty much uh, groundbreaking in parts of the tropical Atlantic here. Water temperatures are as much as five degrees Fahrenheit or even more above normal in those parts of the basin. And that stretches all the way up uh, near Europe uh, off the coast of Portugal as well as the United Kingdom. We'll keep an eye out for how this, this trend is going to be changing changing in the next couple of weeks. We often tend to see this monsoon pattern pick up in Western Africa and see how some of these other feedbacks might affect ocean temperatures as we get towards the main part of the season in August and September. But I'm just going to go ahead and recap Brett and Cindy one more time with the National Hurricane Center's two day outlook. So you see this active wave train off of Africa, these westward moving disturbances, tropical storm form uh, Brett formed over the central tropical Atlantic and then moved over the Lesser Antilles before getting sheared off. You see that cloud stream Structure shifted off to the east of the center of circulation marked by the Hurricane Center. And Cindy degenerated the same way. And now we're keeping an eye out over the next few days to see if it might actually reform into something tropical as it tracks northward toward Atlantic Canada. Just keeping an eye out on where we're at in the season here. You see July 1st down here to my right here on, on in your left on the screen. We're in the early part of the season still. Our peak is not expected until August through, say, early October or so, climatologically speaking. July, for the most part, is a slight uptick in a typical season compared to what we might see in June, but uh, nothing too wild. We have seen some hurricanes in past years, like Hannah in 2020, that formed pretty close to home. So it's so just about time for those of us that are uh, that have maybe family down in the southeast to stay in touch with that hurricane plan and make sure that's ready to go in case one strong, uh, particularly strong storm does form closer to home. Just to kind of recap our climatology here, this was what June um, was basically uh, supposed to look like based on the past 75 years or so of data uh, accumulated by the National Hurricane Center. Most of our storms expected close to home, not really expecting things like Brett and Cindy out in the main part of the tropical Atlantic Basin. July, more of the same. Some more activity down towards the Caribbean and the Lesser Antilles as some of the, the thermodynamics, climatologically speaking, start to catch up. And it's already kind of off to a pretty big boost over there. So we could see a little bit more activity as we get into the middle and later parts of July, although the next week or so is looking pretty quiet. But again, the focal point still being off the Atlantic coast of the U.S., these cold frontal systems, for example, moving over the Gulf Stream and tapping into some of that oceanic fuel. And then also over the Gulf of Mexico, just like, again, Hannah in 2020, a storm that really tapped into some of that warm water and was able to spin up pretty quickly. So these kinds of close to home things can uh, still be a common factor for us really throughout the season. And that's why it's, again, useful to kind of stay in touch with hurricanes.gov on a pretty regular basis. And as we're looking into the long range, graphics like this might pop up on social media and might get tweeted out without too much context, for example. And I wanted to just take some time to explain what exactly this was. These greens, these oranges, these vectors. This is a variable called velocity potential here. And this is actually a three week forecast. So looking at about mid July or so where these green cells here over the East Pacific and Atlantic are actually meant to represent areas of rising motion and diverging upper atmospheric winds, which can kind of help us to diagnose favorable large scale environments for potential hurricanes to form. So. Let's go ahead and break this down. Just like you can split up wind into an east-west and a north-south component, for example, we can also split it up into what's spinning and what's diverging.
When we talk about velocity potential, this is our focal point. Is air converging or diverging? And specifically, we look at this in the upper atmosphere. So consider the scenario where air is diverging, uh, maybe 40,000 feet above us. To replace that mass you're losing, air has to rise up from below, and to compensate for that in the mid-levels, air has to come together in the lower atmosphere, promoting a lot of thunderstorm activity. And this is a good proxy for us to identify where you might have a lot of convection, a lot of moistening, and potentially favorable environment for hurricanes to form from, say, these easterly waves that emerge from Africa. So these green colors here that you see on the left side of your screen are actually cells of diverging air aloft, or a proxy for active convection in this particular modeled example from last year over Africa and the Indian Ocean. This is powerful for us because we can actually track these disturbances over time. Often this is tied to eastward moving disturbances along the deep tropics known as, for example, Kelvin waves or the Madden Julian oscillation. These propagate eastward, modulate the environment, and enhance convection and can potentially give these waves coming off of Africa and other tropical disturbances a boost as they try to spin up into tropical cyclones later on in the peak of the season. So we'll finish up here with a quick visible satellite look. We'll keep an eye on the remnants of Cindy. Otherwise, the tropical Atlantic is looking pretty quiet. I'm going to enjoy the relative quiet period that we should expect coming up soon. But your forecast summary is coming up right after this.